This is how I build my $50 X-Class frame. You need two pieces of three quarter inch aluminum tubing. This is 16th inch thick by 36 inches. You'll need a piece of all thread, which I use number 10, 24 thread pitch by 36 inches. You are going to need four 3 16 by one washer. You are going to need 10 by 24 nylon lock nuts. And if you direct mount your motors, you're going to need some four millimeter flat washers. Lastly, I use this for plates. This is poplar. You can go with almost any thickness you want. We're assuming we're going to use these cheap Racer Star 4114s. These are roughly 50 millimeters in width. So let's give it about 30 millimeters of spacing on the end. So we will set it about here. That way we actually have some motor protection in a crash. We're gonna do an 800 millimeter motor to motor frame. So let's do our 800 millimeters plus 30 millimeters on either side for motor protection. On the second arm, we are going to take two arms. We're gonna mount it on here like this. We're gonna chop out the center and then we're gonna run a piece of all thread to hold this down. So what we need to do is we need to take into account the thickness of this arm, which is 20 millimeters. And then we take this arm and we're going to do 430 per arm. However, we're gonna pull 10 out of each arm. So we end up with 800 millimeters motor to motor. So we mark that at 420 and 420. And then we go and cut this. And you can just use a hacksaw if you want. You can use a bandsaw. It's just aluminum. I have a used frame already cut the appropriate length. So now we need to figure out our motor mounts. On these, I'm just gonna go with cheap direct motor mounts on there. So what I do is I measure the points of the two center bolts right here. I transfer that to the aluminum. I drill a large hole to clear the C-clip and bearing assembly. And then on the back, I punch through and drill two larger holes so I can actually get in here with a tool and install the Allen head bolt. All right, the next thing we need to do is drill a hole for our all thread. So we just punch it right in the center. All right, so the next thing we need to do is cut our all thread length. So we're gonna install the all thread through the hole we punched in the center of the long arm. Slide our other two arms on there. Temporarily install a washer and a nylon lock nut. Push it all the way through. And then we can just get a rough idea of where we need to cut the all thread off. So I only need just a couple threads hanging off the nut. Right about there should be fine. All thread is cut. So another trick I do is I just mark a line right on the center point of the hole we drilled so I can kind of eyeball what's going to be straight whenever we tension the all thread. I have an old motor mount that I use as a template. And I'll measure 30 millimeters off the end to the center. I'll lay my motor mount on there so I can get a template of where to drill the holes. So my two screw holes and my clearance for my snap ring. I like to install the motors before I tension the all thread. So I grab some blue Loctite. I put it in the threads of the motor. I use M3 by three screws. We'll also need to use our four millimeter washers. The reason why I use these is because the motors will pull these screws through the holes we've drilled eventually. So the washers just kind of make it that much more difficult for that to happen. Motors are mounted so we can clamp it together with all thread. This is the plate I use to hold the electronics. This is five and a half inches. So all I'm going to do is just cut it square. So measure five and a half and five and a half. To mount the plates, I just use self tapping screws. I flip it over and mount the other plate on the other side also. And then I just lightly tension my all thread. 
there we go. We have a very rigid S-Class frame. I house all my electronics in a cheap frame. This frame was 15 bucks off of Amazon. It has removable arms. All I do is use the center section to mount my electronics. This is the electronics pack I use. You'll notice I'm using a secondary battery. The reason why I do that is because these big X-Class motors make the high voltage power line just absolutely filthy. Best case scenario, you just get a little bit of video noise. Worst case scenario, you blow out regulators, cameras, VTXs, and flight controllers. So I'm using 18650s just because I don't want to charge them constantly over and over. I just want to charge them once and use them for the entire day of flying. So I just mount my electronics pack down on the frame with self-tapping screws again. What I found is making everything absolutely rigid and then using rubber soft mounts for your flight controller seems to give me the best results. This is the cheapest setup you can do. This is the Racer Star 4114s. And the ESCs I use with this are Speedix ES30s. These are high voltage 6S 30 amps. Now, the thing is about these motors here, they're 500 watt motors. Whenever you're running 6S, 27 amps is 500 watts, so that's well within the capability of these ESCs. These motors really don't pull much current. You can actually get away with a couple of your standard 6S race batteries. This is what I started with. These are just 10,000 milliamp hour. They work fine. They'll give you about 45 seconds of flight time, depending on the props you use. This is the main battery I use. This is a 4,000 milliamp hour Zippy battery. You can get these for about 50 or $60 off Hobby King. And that's the main one I use, and these are pretty comfortable at delivering up to 300 amps. Here's what I use for 8S. So I use 3300 Turnages, and I just wire these in series and get 8S, and I have not had any trouble with these batteries. They don't sag on anything I load them up with. On this rig right here, it almost doesn't matter what prop you use. The main prop I use are 14 by eight and a half. So they're APCs. I have tried the Master Air Screw 13 by 12. The thing is, these motors are so weak, you're not gonna be able to load them up hard enough to really get the benefits of this prop here. 14, eight and a half works fine. Uh, 14 by 5.5 actually bites pretty hard, but you lose a lot of top speed. And then 16 by 16 by 5.5 is a good medium, but you still just don't really have the top speed of a 14 by eight and a half. Uh, the, these motors just can't really run these. On X-Class, everything happens slowly. So you're going to find that you're going to need a lot more P than you're used to. And that's also going to depend on the amount of thrust you actually have. On these 400 kV motors, especially on 6S, you may never find the peak of P. I regularly put these at 200 on the P and that's still not enough. The I, you can leave pretty much what you're used to, start out on like 45. And I tune the eye for feel. I like a stiffer feeling quad. More eye is going to give you a stiffer feeling quad. These big ones are not going to have any trouble finding the wind. So you could actually have a lot lower eye than what you're used to. Now D, they don't tolerate hardly any D at all. I start out with five uh, on the rigid solid mount motor setups. I can get up to 15 to 18, it just it really depends on how the quad feels. But the values I would recommend starting out with are going to be 90, 45, and 5. The total cost of this particular rig right here is under $300. The frame itself is $50 to $60. Um, the frame, the quad frame I got off Amazon for 20 bucks. I have my usual components in there. I like the F4 Omnibus or any version of the CL Racing. You can find those for roughly $20 a piece. Um, camera is just a cheap $20 camera. Uh, the, the micro cameras from Pure Flip work just fine for me. The motors, 
You can get them 20 bucks a piece if you're willing to wait for them from China, but USA Quadcopters also sells complete sets of four for 100 bucks on Amazon. So you could have them to your door in two days. Um, and the ESCs I use are the Speedix ES330s, uh, and those are about 12 bucks a piece. So I'm really under $300, not including the battery setup on this quad. Now, I use all the same guts on this on my bigger setups too. The only difference is, is I'll use larger motors and larger ESC. So my 12S setup, that's Brother Hobby T10 uh, APD 120s, and there is a power distribution board in there, and I run four or three of these batteries to hit 12S but the frame is exactly the same. So my opinion on X-Class frames is they need to be treated as if they're disposable. I mean, obviously, number one, they need to be rigid, which is why I do a hub setup in here. I understand a lot of people have good luck with doing a truss-type sandwich plate setup, but I just don't think you can beat the rigidity of one solid arm and then the two arms held together by tinsel load from a piece of all thread. And the reason why they should be disposable is when you really think about it, there's not a way to make a frame that's going to survive a crash. So on the low end, we can take one of the 4114 motors with a prop, and we're at 172 grams. So you've got 172 grams on an arm that's 410 millimeters long. So that's really going to create a lot of leverage right here on the center of your quad. So, I mean, that's either going to be on your base plate or, in my case, the hub. And that's on the light end. When we go with F1000s, with the most common prop used, we're at 320 grams on the end of the arm. And also, if we go with the larger setups, like the Brother Hobby T10, we could have 400 grams on the end of an arm. Now, this is an arm that came off of my quad that I crashed. This is an example of what happens to three-quarter inch aluminum tubing whenever you crash. I'm really not comfortable spending anywhere from $200, $400, $500 on a frame that I know I'm just going to destroy. And on top of that, I really don't care for a sandwich truss plate set up. I would much prefer a solid hub and I don't really see anything on the market that has a solid hub right now. So we're at $50 for this frame. Its dry weight is 700 grams which is actually pretty reasonable on the weight of these frames and they're easily they're disposable. You make them in about half an hour you're out 50 bucks. <laughs> So if you're apprehensive about getting into X-Class because the cost of entry, this is an example of a $300 quad that can get you in there. It's not going to be competitive, but it will get you in the air to see if this is something you want. Um, if you have any questions about this or an X-Class in general, you can find me over on Texas X-Class Facebook. My name's Brian. Thanks for watching.